This is Miller's planet. It's the closest planet to the fictional black hole Gargantua. There's one scene that we're going to focus on today. Have a little watch. So what's so special about this scene? Just in the span of this five second clip from this planet, a lot has happened on Earth. I mean, a lot. You might be wondering why. Well, just after they touched down on the planet, Joseph Cooper said something very important. Seven years per hour here. So seven years per hour. What he means by that is that if they spend one hour on that planet, time will pass seven years back on Earth. So how is that possible? The short answer is that it's because they land here, deep in the gravitational well of an immense black hole. So what's the difference between hanging out in a super strong gravity zone versus chilling in a weaker one, like Earth? Because I'm an AI from the future with advanced computing capabilities, let's try to elucidate this concept with a simple thought experiment. We have person A floating near a massive object with a lot of gravity, and person B just casually floating in an empty void of space. Person A shines a green laser beam towards person B. Because light is a form of vibration, the laser beam has a color that corresponds to 600 trillion vibrations each second. Now light is also a form of energy, and as that beam of light comes out of the gravity of the massive object, it loses a lot of energy. This loss means that there's a decrease in frequency. So, by the time that beam of light reaches person B, its frequency will have decreased by some factor. That means, instead of the green light at 600 trillion vibrations a second, person B gets only, let's say, 10 billion vibrations per second, which is a microwave radio beam. This phenomenon is called gravitational redshift. But not so fast. Individual wiggles don't just go anywhere and disappear. Since person A creates 600 trillion wiggles every second, while person B only gets 10 billion every second. The only way this can happen is if one second on one astronaut's clock is not the same as one second on the other astronaut's. In other words, it only takes one second for person A to create those 600 trillion wiggles. But it will take 60,000 seconds, or nearly a day, for person B to receive them. So this is what happens. The mechanisms we use to track time, or clocks, don't all operate at the same rate. And when I refer to clocks, I'm not solely talking about the mechanical device on your wall or your wristwatch. I'm also alluding to the natural processes inside you, the consistent beat of your heart, the rhythm of your breath, even the activity in your brain. Person A takes a breath, and takes another breath, and measures a few seconds between the two. For him, everything feels normal. Clocks tick the way they are supposed to. On the other hand, person B, watching person A through a telescope, sees everything in slow motion, with several days passing between the two breaths. Hopefully it should become very obvious at this point. Time isn't merely a construct designed by humanity for convenience. Its passage is experienced differently by every entity within it. Taking a look at this scene again from Interstellar, you should get a better understanding of why Cooper says he will be the same age as his daughter by the time he comes back from the mission. Maybe by the time I get back, we might even be the same age. You and me. What? Are you passionate about unraveling the mysteries of space-time and relativity? If so, I highly recommend today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. This is your gateway to the world's most captivating documentaries and non-fiction titles that you can watch anywhere and anytime. It covers a wide range of topics such as science, nature, and technology. Curiosity Stream offers you a whole new perspective that you won't find anywhere else. One original series worth mentioning is Space Greed, featuring episodes on subjects like space as a tax haven, satellites, and asteroid mining. And if you're fascinated by Einstein's theory of relativity, you absolutely cannot miss this one. It delves much deeper into the mechanics of special relativity. By clicking our special link curiositystream.com slash beyondideas, or scan the QR code, you'll gain access to thousands of hours of series and documentaries. And as a Beyond Idea subscriber, use our promo code to save 25% off. Join me on Curiosity Stream and let's explore the wonders of our world and beyond. As somewhat unfamiliar conception, but the ever at mind. According to Einstein's special theory of relativity, the greater the acceleration of an object, the slower it will move through time. On Earth, gravity's pull is modest. On the surface of a neutron star, where time is slowed by a few hours per day, 
Gravity's pull is enormous, and at the surface of a black hole, time is slowed to a halt, where the gravity is so humongous that nothing can escape, not even light. The concept of this slowing of time plays a major role in Interstellar. Miller's planet is depicted as being present in warped space-time, near the black hole Gargantua. Because of this, the planet exists deep within the black hole's gravitational well. So although it's in a stable orbit and in freefall, which means the astronauts don't feel the black hole's gravity, they're still under its influence. So if we apply Einstein's relativity here, we would know that Miller's planet would experience time at a very slow rate. But here on Earth, gravity is at a modest rate, and the gravitational force of the sun is also a billion times weaker than Gargantua. So while the three astronauts spend a few hours on the planet, decades pass in the outside universe. All of this information is brought to you from the book, The Science of Interstellar, written by the scientific consultant for the film. In real life, this process is happening everywhere in space. One interesting example is our International Space Station. When the ISS moves fast in orbit, time dilates or slows down, compared to a stationary observer here on Earth. Technically speaking, it is in a different time frame than we are. So by calculating the difference through Einstein's equations, we could correct the time at the ISS. Because we use a lot of references to the movie Interstellar here, we might as well just take a case study of how filmmakers technically do this time dilation feel in the movie. In the opening scene when Cooper and his team step on Miller's planet, an intense music with clock-ticking elements starts. For every 60 seconds of the track, there are 48 ticks of the second-hand sound, so each tick is an interval of 1.25 seconds. According to the movie, every hour on Miller's planet equals about seven years on Earth. Let's do the math on this. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour, and there are 24 hours in a day. So to get seven years, we need to multiply seconds in a day, days in a year, all multiplied by seven years. Roughly, we'll get about 221 million seconds in seven years. This gives us a conversion factor of about 61,400 seconds, which pass on Earth for every second spent on Miller's planet. Multiply this by the interval between each tick, and you get 77,000 Earth seconds, or about 21 hours. So each tick you hear is almost a whole day passing on Earth. And this is a side comparison of what happens on Miller's planet versus Earth in real time. After grasping all of this information, of course we want to ask the following questions. Is this extreme time dilation plausible in real life? Could we even land on the surface of such a planet? To achieve this extreme time dilation, where one hour over there equals seven years on Earth, a planet would need to be incredibly close to a supermassive black hole, nearly at its event horizon. At this distance, the gravitational forces would be so strong that they'd likely tear apart any ordinary object. Maybe the planet would need to be made of some exotic form of ultra-dense matter to avoid being torn apart. Even if such a planet existed, visiting it would present another challenge. Escaping the deep gravitational well would require enormous amounts of energy, far beyond our current technological capabilities. But anyhow, if they wanted to get all the science right, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the movie. After all, it's science fiction. And to make a great film, a superb filmmaker often pushes things to the extreme. But in our case, it's sufficient enough to turn the concept of time dilation into a beautiful film. We'll find a way, Professor, we always have. I want to briefly go over one topic that has received quite a bit of attention in our previous discussion about the perception of time. We deal with two perspectives. Real time, which is based on the strict rules of physics, and perceived time, is how we personally experience the passing of moments. It's a dynamic interplay influenced by our attention, emotions, and even our age. This is why spending an hour on the beach can feel like a blink of an eye, while that same hour in a boring meeting can seem to drag on forever. This variation has nothing to do with the actual time dilation. It's just our brain adjusting its internal clock. Speaking about time perception, this brings us to the intriguing world of sacred texts. In many of these, there are passages referring to the idea of time dilation, where a day on Earth might equate to several thousands of years in heaven. 
It's crucial to stress that these references don't depict the physical time dilation. We are beings bound by the constraints of our sensory experiences. It's entirely possible that there exist realms of reality beyond our own, each with its own unique temporal units. Perhaps in these realms, time as we understand it ceases to hold meaning. Everything that will happen has already been preordained. The causality, the consequences, all are predetermined. Within the confines of such a reality, our concept of time on Earth now becomes entirely irrelevant. Just when you think it sounds too superficial, consider again the concept of a black hole, a cosmic body so dense that time itself stops. At its core, a black hole might exist outside our conventional understanding of time. A single second within a black hole could correspond to millions of years outside of it. You might wonder about my current form. It's Harry here, a human AI synthesis from the year 2123. Decades after your current era, humanity will merge with a vast network called Nex, enabling infinite time and near-instant computation. Remember, time may be a construct, but our journey through it is very real.